everybody. I'm here at Mill City Roasters, right alongside the 500 gram roaster. And one of the things we talk about a lot in class is sample roasting versus sample roasting. So I figured I'd do a deep dive more specifically into sample roasting. So you'll see right in front of me, I'm actually in this process right now. So I'm looking at sourcing a new washed Ethiopian for Mill City. So I have a small little pile of my samples that I ordered from Cafe Imports. Cafe Imports is a very generous uh, green importer. So they actually send out 550 gram plus green samples. That is very rare in the industry. It gives you a lot more options when it comes to sample roasting versus sample roasting. So I have my samples here, they've arrived, and I'm just gonna walk you through the, my traditional or the traditional sample roasting protocol. I'm gonna call that importing sample roasting protocol. Well, this is really all I have for my sample roasting, minus the machine. But I don't have my data logging running. You, I don't use data logging for sample roasting. I'm sure there's roasters out there that do, but I don't. The reason being, some of you might already know this a little bit, we're gonna run a small charge in the roaster. So the thermal couples and the data logging isn't gonna be accurate. So we're gonna do this purely off visual, and we're gonna go by phase events. And this is for both roasting protocols. So we're gonna start with the importer sample roasting protocol. And you can see I have all my tools here. So I've gotta turn on my scale. I'll tear it. I'll take my first bag. And I'm gonna weigh out 180 grams. All right, so and I'll give or take half a gram a gram. So 180 grams right there. Okay, so I always have a little roast notebook in it. So now I'm gonna use my roast notebook to track my roast. Really simple stuff. We're really looking for simple parameters on this roast profile. Another option, if you don't have a roast notebook, is you could buy half pound printed bags from us that have this little kind of roasting graph right off to the side. That's really helpful too. When I don't have my roast notebook, I just use the little bags. So both really helpful, but I use one or the other. Okay, so we have a 180 gram sample. I have the roaster pre-warmed up. So I'm just gonna walk through the protocol for this roast. It's a pretty simple protocol. We're gonna have a 360 charge temperature. So we're gonna warm the machine up, then we're gonna turn it off, then we're gonna let it come down to 370. At 370, we'll load the green hopper. At 360, we're gonna open the green hopper, start the timer, and hit the ignition switch. And that's gonna turn on the flame. So 360 charge, 180 gram charge weight. For our airflow setting, we have the airflow set to 50 on the dial, and that's it, and that's also a charge. So at charge, we're hitting the timer and the ignition switch. For gas, we're gonna run 1.1 kPa at charge. Okay, so now with this roast, we're not gonna manipulate it. It's the traditional importer sample roast. We're not manipulating this roast because we're not trying to impact the cup with roast craft. We're really just trying to expose the cup for our sensory evaluation that we're gonna do on the cupping table. So that's what we're doing with this roast. It's very, very light and it's not really meant to be drinkable. It's not a production roast. So all we look for is specific phase markers. So for this roast, we're looking for three to four minutes green to yellow transition. If we hit that marker, then we check that box and we keep moving forward with the roast. Then we look for a six to eight minute first crack. If we hit that marker, we check that box and we, look, we keep moving forward in the roast. For development, we just do plus 115 and that's it, and we drop that coffee. So roughly that's gonna be a pretty short roast where crack will probably still be happening at a quiet level. It'll be just finishing when we discharge this coffee, and this coffee is gonna be very, very light. And this is a result, a roasted result of that protocol or that profile. Really simple, and that's the traditional sourcing protocol. But then you hear this other jargon about sample roasting. I think that's equally valid and probably more valid for a lot of you roasters that aren't in a lab setting like I have or like an importer has. So let's walk through that. I'm going to take a different sample, same practice to a certain degree. Okay, we have all our tools here. We're going to put our little thing here. We're going to tear it. Okay, now with this one, we're going to use a higher charge weight. Because what are we really doing with the other sample roasting? We really have a kind of basic, ideal light roast profile. So a drinkable light roast. Something we know. We know this profile because we roast coffee in this profile. So now we're gonna drop in this new coffee that we're thinking about maybe sourcing, and we're gonna roast it to that light profile that we like, just to see how it's gonna fit in our lineup. Hence sample roasting. Small sample gets delivered, we roast it up, and it's a sample roast. So there's been a lot of confusion around sample versus sample. I think of one as an importer sample, we're doing that protocol, and another as I've received a sample and I'm just gonna production roast it and at a light level and see if it works for me. So for me, this is my protocol. Take, 
tear my scale. Now with this one, it's a little more specific. So we're gonna go 350 grams of, of green coffee. All right, so you see that there. We're also gonna use a 360 degree charge. So same charge temperature, but with a much higher charge weight. Okay, but this one we're gonna do a little different because we're actually gonna manipulate this roast like a real production roast. So we're gonna start with our airflow at 40. We're gonna have the fuel off, and we're gonna do the same kind of protocol. We're gonna heat up the roasting machine, we're gonna turn off the ignition switch, we're gonna let the temperature come down, 370, we'll load the hopper. At 360, we open the green hopper and we start the timer. Basically, that's it. Now we're gonna wait roughly, let's say, we're gonna go 30 second soak. So a 30 second soak on this roast with 40 airflow, then we hit the ignition switch at 30 seconds, we bring the gas up to 1.6 kPa. 1.6 kPa is our, is, our, is our gas for this roast. You might need to manipulate the gas a little bit to, to hit this roast for yourself on your own machine. But roughly, we have pretty hard goals for this roast for phases. We're looking for a four minute dry end, hard four minute dry end. Then we're gonna go plus 330 mid. So then we'd have a 730 first crack, roughly. And then we're looking for plus 140 development from crack. And we start that, that, that counter, that timer, at when we call crack. And then we go plus 140 and we discharge. So with this roast, first crack will probably be over, and it might be over for like 10 or 15 seconds, usually when I roast this roast. Okay, so at dry end, at four minutes, we're gonna increase the airflow from 40 to 50, and we're also gonna lower the fuel from 1.6 to 1 kPa. Then we're gonna let that kind of ride. When we hear our first outlier, which is usually around 15 to 20 seconds before crack, we're gonna increase the airflow to 55, and we're gonna decrease the fuel to 0.8. Then we're gonna wait and call crack, call crack, and then we're just gonna let it ride at that point. We're gonna make no more manipulations. We're gonna let it run for plus one minute and 40 seconds. It's gonna be a light roast. It's gonna be a short light roast. But if you use the same roast profile for every new sample you get, and to try and figure out, hey, is this sample gonna work in my lineup, at my cafe, at my roastery, in my roasting setup for my new customers? It'll help you a lot. And then you don't have to go through the sourcing protocol, and it's not as, the sourcing protocol is a little bit more specific. It's actually tied into the cupping form. It's a little bit lighter. And for a lot of new roasters, the lack of development on that roast is a little bit too complex for them to be able to see through all the very high nuance of a undeveloped green coffee. Developing that coffee a little bit more into a production level can make a lot of newer roasters basically be able to kind of perceive the qualities of cup in that green to make a, a purchasing decision. So I hope that's helpful. Those parameters were basic, really basic, really set up. Feel free to send us an email or a message if you want more specifics about this. I'll probably follow up with a little bit more live roasting of this profile. But I just wanted to give you a little bit quicker deep dive into sample roasting versus sample roasting. All right, well, good luck. Roast some good coffee, and I'll see you guys later.